Number nine, a cosmic ray proton moving toward the Earth at 5 times 10 to the 7 meters per second experiences a magnetic force of 1 times 7 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. What is the strength of the magnetic field if there is a 45 degree angle between the magnetic field and the proton's velocity? All right, so we have to know this formula, that the force on a, on a moving charged particle will equal the magnitude of that particles charged multiplied by the velocity of that particle moving through the magnetic field multiplied by the strength of that magnetic field multiplied then by the sine of the angle the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field okay um, so we basically know everything right I mean if you look at the what the question is asking for it's asking for the strength of the magnetic field in other words the magnitude of B so no, all you have to do mathematically is just divide out the charge and the, and the velocity and the sine of theta. And look, look, there's the formula. That's it, right? Look at how beautiful that is. Boom. All right. Now we'd like to look at it the other way. So let's just do a little swap a right? We'll put the, bay, the B on the left-hand side. This looks nice now. Okay. Now, all we have to do is plug in the values. Okay. What's the force? So the force here, they told us, was 1.70 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. That's good. No conversions are necessary. What's the charge? Remember, charges in coulombs. Uh-oh. Where's the charge? It ain't there. They gave you enough information, though, to figure it out. A highlight of the word proton. You have to memorize this, most likely. The charge of a proton is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's one proton. Obviously, if you had two, then you just multiply this thing by two. Okay, but that's the charge of a single proton. The charge of a single electron, then, is just negative this. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Now, when you plug in your Q value in this formula, um, I don't know why the text doesn't have it, but it's technically the absolute value. So don't, you know, don't plug in the signs here for Q, just plug in the magnitude. Because the signs have nothing to do with the direction here on these problems. The directions are much more complicated uh, than just simply plugging in signs and being able to find the direction via the signs. All right. Uh, you should definitely have reviewed number one, at least for this chapter, to kind of understand that fact. All right. Um, anyway, we're going to plug in 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs there for the charge. The velocity they told us that's in meters per second. So hooray, we don't have to do any conversions. And then they told us the sine of the angle, 45. Okay. So literally take out that handy dandy calculator. And plug it in. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 16th divided now by parentheses. 1.6 times 10 to the... No. Six, oh, okay. Slow down. Let's do that again. Let me make sure I'm stating it correctly because I might have misstated myself. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 16th divided now by parentheses. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th times then 5 times 10 to the 7th multiplied by... Make sure you're in degree mode. Multiplied by sine of 45 okay happened to me one time on a test and uh i did the whole test in radians <laughs> ah, needless to say i didn't do too well but you know what did it affect my life in the long run no so don't let one little episode ever get you down all right you just move forward letter b what is the value obtained in part? Is the value obtained in part A consistent with the uh, known strength of the? Uh, yeah, this is about right. Okay, that's enough of, of a discussion, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. All right, take care.